Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. What day are we in today? Wednesday. It's Wednesday. August? 28th. 28th. What is August 28th all about? It's a feast huh? of St. Augustine. Feast of St. Augustine, Bishop of Hippo. And St. Augustine is the son of, or was the son of? St. Monica. Monica, whose feast we celebrated? Yesterday. Yesterday, very good. So you see how very much connected the life of mother and son uh, are, that even in the church, we celebrate them together. Okay? St. Monica yesterday, St. Augustine today. And I'm just trying to think of a reason why the church chose to put these two feasts together. Okay? Why, why one day after another? And you know what I uh, seem to conclude from this is that one is the cause, the other is the effect. And normally the cause comes before the effect, right? So St. Augustine is a saint because he had a mother who was a saint. He had a mother who was saintly, who prayed and cried rivers of tears literally <laughs> for the conversion of both her husband and her son and so <clears throat> perhaps behind every saintly child or offspring is a saintly parent so that is why it's very important that both i mean parents have to be saints otherwise their children would find it very difficult to be saints because there's no example to follow. There's no example to emulate and there's no one to be praying for them, right? So it is very important for parents to try to live sanctity themselves so that there is something that their children uh, will benefit from, benefit from their prayers, benefit from their good example, particularly. Well, today we have the Feast of St. Augustine, who was the effect of the prayers of St. Monica, at least when it came to his conversion. That is why St. Augustine is one of the best examples of sinners. And in this, the case of St. Augustine, a real big, big sinner in his life, in his youth, who converted and became uh, also an equally, if not bigger, saint. Of course, St. Augustine is not the first one uh, that we hear of who converted, right? You, you hear examples, for example, of uh, well, St. Paul himself, who persecuted Jesus Christ, persecuted the church, and converted and became a very big saint, right? The, the apostle to the Gentiles. Um, and I'm sure we could think of many other people um, that the church has proposed to us to be examples of conversion and sanctity. But St. Augustine is uh, special and unique in the sense that St. Augustine uh, was a big sinner in, in different aspects of life, in different aspects of, of his uh, uh, search for truth. See? He... Um, he was a, a person who was always seeking for the truth and seeking for happiness on earth. Okay? And in fact, uh, he did that both intellectually and physically, materially. Okay? Intellectually, he was always trying to look for the truth, trying to look for um, uh, answers to life's many big questions that he fell into different heresies himself and and uh, <clears throat> and uh, and supported um uh different wrong philosophies um like for example uh, the manichaeans you know so um, the manichaean heresy he which he uh, uh was part of for a good decade almost of his life okay? and then he was also 
uh, a big sinner of the flesh. Okay? He was uh, a victim of his own, um, of his own uh, attachment to material pleasure and pleasures of the flesh. That he also uh, committed many big sins related to that. But St. Augustine, you see, was sincere at least in trying to look for the truth. There are plenty, plenty of people who are big sinners and who couldn't care less about uh, finding the truth and trying to correct themselves. That's what's bad about it. But St. Augustine was, yeah, he was a big sinner, but at the same time, he was also a big seeker of the truth. Okay? He was also trying his best to seek the truth. And evidence of that was that he actually asked for help from people. So, and he helped himself. See? He was reading plenty of books. He was talking to plenty of people. And when the occasion uh, came up, he also sought the help of people like uh, St. Ambrose. Of course, through the intercession also of his mother, St. Monica. Yeah? So he, he was very sincere in asking for help. See, that's part of, the, that's part of conversion. You, if you really want to convert, if you really want to do to have your to straighten up your life, eh? Well, you have to ask the help of other people, because many times the reason why we live wayward lives is because we don't see the truth ourselves. Eh? It's because we couldn't understand what is wrong with what we're doing. It's because we are deaf, or we choose to be deaf to people who are already telling us what's wrong with us. Okay? So part of wanting to convert and part of wanting to straighten up our lives is the humility to ask for help. That is why pride and cockiness, you know, is the trademark of the devil. The devil doesn't want you to, co to, be, to correct your lives. The devil doesn't want you to straighten up. And the more you exhibit that behavior of cockiness, of pride, well, then the more you will stay in your sinful situation. The more you will stay in your sinful wayward state, the more conversions going to be, uh, you know, far from you. The more the grace of God is not going to touch you, because you are rebelling against all the help you are getting. See, so uh, Saint Augustine, though, although he was a big sinner, he had the opposite disposition. He had the opposite behavior. He was at least humble in seeking that truth, not only by his own efforts, but also by uh, the efforts of others who he listened to. Number one of which was his own mother. And then there was St. Ambrose to help him out. Okay? But he was listening. He was at least uh, uh, prepared to accept the truth. So he, he was disposed to uh, find the truth and, and abide by that truth that other people were showing him. Okay? So that is what's good about um, uh, St. Augustine. Okay? So he was humble enough to seek the truth and to cooperate with the grace that God was giving him. You see, God, God always keeps giving us graces in many more ways than one. See? And the grace of God comes in many different ways. It comes with the way He inspires us to live good lives. It comes with the way uh, He inspires us to or motivates us to listen to our parents. See, The grace of God comes through the counsel of your parents, the advice of your parents, the counsel of other people, the, the, the advice of priests in confession and spiritual direction. See? That there are many ways, many channels by which God is giving us graces for our conversion. But if we don't want to listen, if we don't want to cooperate, if we don't want to open ourselves to the grace of God, then nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Okay, We will stay in our own rotten sinfulness if we don't want to open up to God. You see? So the grace of God is never going to be lacking. Okay? And he told that to St. Paul himself. The grace of God is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. The only thing lacking is your cooperation. 
Eh? You got to cooperate. You have to put up some effort. You got to show some, some willingness to convert and be better. And better your lives and improve yourselves. And it, does, it doesn't have to take... Uh, uh, you know, a big sinner to convert. Every little thing we do every day is an occasion for conversion, meaning an occasion to do better, to do better than yesterday, to do better than the last time that you that you uh, did your chores or that you did your schoolwork or that you uh, showed charity to somebody else. Okay? Living the virtues better and better every day is a sign of conversion. It doesn't have to be. Conversion is not only jumping from sinfulness to a state of grace. Of course, that's the big part of it. But every day that we try to do better in everything we do, no matter how little, that is conversion. And that requires two things. One, the grace of God moving us to do better, which is never lacking. It's always there. And number two, our response to that grace. Okay? Those are the two things that we need to make things work. Okay? The grace of God is there. It will always be there, especially we pray for it, as I would encourage every one of you to do, because if not, without the grace of God, you can do nothing. And if you don't pray for the grace of God, then there's nothing to begin with. Okay? And then the second part of that is your effort. Your effort. You need to put a sincere effort to really try to get better. Okay? And St. Augustine showed us that good example today. It took him all of 32 years when he converted. Okay? But you don't need to wait for 32 years. <laughs> you can start now. Okay? And you will have your life would have been a lot better, okay? a lot better than uh, it is now. If only you open your hearts to the grace of God and you sincerely, you sincerely desire and work towards that conversion. So conversion is a daily struggle. Okay? Conversion is a daily struggle. It's a daily effort every day to do better than yesterday. To do better than the last time you did whatever it was you were doing. Okay? And that's actually the definition of perfection. Okay? Perfection. Nobody is perfect in this world because we were all born with original sin. We were all born with defects already. Okay? And we may, we may never attain the level of perfection that we are called to attain. But here's the consolation. While nobody is perfect, everybody is perfectible. Okay? All of us are perfectible. Meaning, meaning, we can always inch closer to perfection than yesterday. Okay? There is always room for improvement. Okay? Uh, I always keep remembering that quote which I had read when I was a, a kid. What's the biggest room in the world? What's the biggest room in the world? Huh? The biggest room in the world is the room for improvement okay? there's always room for improvement in our lives there's always room to do better and that is the measure of perfection always to do better than yesterday okay? there's always room for that and the way to do that is to respond to grace to respond to the graces that God is giving us every day that's never lacking what is lacking most of the time is our response to the grace that God gives us okay so never give up. There's always hope for improvement. Never give up. Giving up and despair is a sin. It's one of the biggest mistakes that we could ever commit in life. That's the mistake of Judas who despaired, lost hope of forgiveness. See? Let us not fall into that. Let us always be optimistic that we can, we can improve ourselves. We can convert if only if we respond to the grace of God with humility, with gratitude, and with effort. Okay, that's it for us this morning, folks. We get off to Mass. You know, Parker was there. Our dog was listening in the window very attentively. See?
Parker also needs to know how to convert. Okay, everybody, have a good day. See you again tomorrow. Bye. Bye.